to be ignorant of what occurred before you were born is to always remain a child. For what is the worth of a human life unless it is woven into the life of our ancestors by the records of history? This adventure doesn't begin in some big city or some fancy town. This adventure begins in a small town, a forgotten town in Mississippi. You see, this story begins in 1817, about 32 miles north of Natchez, Mississippi, in a small town now called Rodney, Mississippi. But this isn't a story about some time and place in history. No, this is a story about you and a story about me. It's a story about how history not only shows us where we've been, but shows us where we're going. And if not protected, it's a story that will be lost to time. Rodney's story is one of both triumph and tragedy. Because of its ideal location on the Mississippi River, Rodney nearly became Mississippi's first state capital, losing out by just three votes. Shortly after, construction began on Rodney First Presbyterian Church. This two-story red brick building was dedicated on January 1st 1832. The town was now booming. It was known for its county fairs, jockey club, a lecture hall, thespian groups, and its own quality schools. A mere 10 years later, the town was almost completely wiped out by a severe epidemic of yellow fever. The outbreak was so devastating that it was reported in the national news. An outbreak this severe could have meant the end for Rodney. However, it was not the end. By 1850, Rodney had recovered, stronger than ever. It was now the busiest port on the Mississippi between New Orleans and St. Louis. Around this time, the second church in Rodney was built, Mount Zion First Baptist Church. The town was thriving once more. They boasted 35 stores, two banks, two newspapers, a large hotel complete with a ballroom, and several churches and schools. By the next decade, it would quadruple in size. Just when Rodney believed that the worst was behind them, April 12, 1861 occurred, the beginning of the Civil War. But it would be a full two years before Rodney would really begin to feel the effects of the Civil War. You see, until Vicksburg fell on July 4, 1863, Rodney had seen little action from the Civil War. After the fall of Vicksburg, the Union gunboat, the USS Rattler, was stationed at Rodney's Port. Though Union Navy Admiral David Porter had left strict instructions that no one was to leave the ship, the crew was restless. So when Reverend Baker, a Northern sympathizer, invited the captain and his crew to attend services on September 13th, it was an invitation they couldn't refuse. The 
That Sunday morning, the captain, a lieutenant, and some 18 soldiers arrived at the church, dressed in their best uniforms, and quietly seated themselves in the congregation. None were armed except second assistant engineer A. M. Smith, who carried his revolver hidden beneath his clothes. Just as the second hymn began, a Confederate cavalry commander, Lieutenant Allen, walked up the aisle, approached Reverend Baker, and apologized for the interruption. He announced that the church was surrounded by rebels and demanded the surrender of the Union sailors. Union engineer A.M. Smith secretly reached into his garment, drew his pistol, and fired a single shot at Lieutenant Allen. As soon as the shot was fired, a battle broke out. As the congregation dove beneath the pews, the Confederate cavalry surrounded the building and began firing through the windows. After a brief but intense gunfight, it was clear that the Union soldiers had been captured and taken prisoner. When word reached the remaining crew on the USS Rattler, which only sat about 300 yards from Rodney Presbyterian Church, the crew began shelling the city with its cannons. They struck several homes, buildings, and Rodney Presbyterian Church as well. Confederate Lieutenant Allen sent word to the Rattler that if the shelling didn't end, he would hang the prisoners, and the shelling subsided. Although this was only a small victory for the Confederate soldiers, the crew of the USS Rattler became the laughingstock of a nation. You see, this was the first time in history that the crew and captain of an ironclad gunboat had been captured and taken prisoner. Rodney had managed to make it through the Civil War mostly unscathed, but nothing could prepare them for what was to come. Rodney's rise and fall would ultimately come from the same source, the Mississippi River. Being a port town, the river was the lifeblood of this town. Sometime around 1870, a sandbar began forming just north of Rodney. Within a few short years, this sandbar had grown large enough to alter the course of the Mississippi. After the river altered its course, Rodney was no longer a port town. The Mississippi now lay two miles west of Rodney. This was the beginning of the end. In 1923, the last full-time pastor of Rodney Presbyterian Church resigned, leaving behind a congregation of just 16 people. By 1930, its life as an official town came to a permanent end when the Governor Theodore Bilbo issued an executive proclamation ending the township. But you see, this isn't where Rodney's story ends. No, you see, today you and I have a role to play in Rodney's history. The first role is that of experience. We can relive the memories of our ancestors by visiting places, towns, and communities like Rodney. History is all around us and very often is found in our own backyards. The other way that you can help continue Rodney's story is by supporting efforts there to save the buildings. Not only will you be saving the buildings, but you'll be saving our history. History is best experienced not on the page of a textbook, but when we can go touch it and feel it. History is how we 
intertwine our stories with those of our ancestors.